Guys, welcome back to this episode of the Smalls RV Adventures. Our vacation has come to an end and I have to winterize this camper. So I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step 2022 on how we winterize our camper when we go on travel. Stay tuned, everybody. As you can see, we have our Camco heated water holes on. We have all our connections covered up. $2 is what it cost us. This is just great value aluminum foil from Walmart with a plastic bag and some electrical tape and this kept us from freezing and temperatures going into the 20s for several days. This is the water going into our camper again. The great, great value aluminum foil with the electrical tape kept us from freezing up. Under the aluminum foil, we just used a regular washcloth just to provide some extra insulation and it works. Thing we like to do when we winterize is to relieve the pressure off the line. So we're gonna empty the water that's in the lines into buckets. Then we're gonna pour it into our holding what tank. What we do is we open up these lines. This relieves the pressure coming off. We're gonna have a small amount coming out and then a large amount. Remember to turn off your water heater. Just remember, make sure your water heater is off because you're emptying out the water from your hot water tank. Make sure to check for secondary lines because we have another line over here. Now back to when I was telling you, you're gonna have to check and just wait for the water to stop flowing because the water seemed like it stopped and then now we have like a steady flow. With this process, you're gonna repeat two times because after you blow the lines out, some more water goes down there and you have to let that out. But after you do it the second time, you can just leave it open because as you travel, whatever is down there would just leak out onto the road. And this is clean water. This is coming from your fresh water tank and any leftover water that was on the bottom level of your trailer in the lines. It would just drip right out. We just dump this water into our holding tank, which this side is already open because we're emptying up because we're leaving. So this water is going right into the drain. Draining the water from the underside of your RV, you can open up the area where you have your hot water heater just to let some of the cool air go inside. So when you have to alleviate the pressure from your hot water tank and the heating element, it won't splash you. So here's where you have your heating element is inside and you're a node rod, but you're gonna wanna release the pressure then take out your anode rod that would release any extra water that's in your hot water tank Once you're satisfied that it's finished draining on the first stage here we're gonna come up here and you're gonna need an anode wrench and a screwdriver and first we're gonna release the pressure shouldn't be much in there or anything there's nothing because we emptied everything out then you're gonna use your anode wrench for that thing there and you're gonna see if there's any more water in there. Get your node rod out, you wanna inspect it. We just put this one in right before the, uh, the summer. So we are still good with this. So there's no water coming out. I'm just gonna put this right back in there. Tighten it back up and we're ready for next season. So before we blow out the lines, we're gonna remember to close all these valves. Because as you blow in the water, your air will come right out of these valves. So you want to make sure that you close them. Now we do have this quick release that goes to an air compressor, but we don't have the attachment. So I had to modify the attachment. This is just a kit that came with the air compressor. This is for like a basketball or something. I just shoved it in there and it provides an airtight seal so that we can still blow air through the lines sufficiently. This attaches to your city water connection. You can just screw this right in. Remember, tidy righty, lefty loosey. Don't forget when you're blowing air, if you have an outdoor shower, make sure you blow the air out of there too because that can freeze up. All right, this next process, we're gonna blow air through all the lines, cutting on each faucet one at a time. Remember, if you have an outdoor shower, you have to do that one too. And also remember, if you're gonna use an air compressor, make sure you have a way to power the air compressor. We're gonna use a 1000 watt portable power station. So if you're gonna use a power station, make sure it has enough power to power the air compressor. Here's the setup to blow the air through. This is a Romeo 1000 watt 
portable power station. Right now we have 99%. We have power. And we have to remember to set this at 15 PSI. You can't see it that well, but we're gonna set it to about 15 PSI. You don't wanna blow the lines out in your RV. So you set it to about 15. That should be enough air where you're not gonna blow out the lines. See the water coming out. That was just a bit of the cold water coming out of the outdoor shower. The hot water. You see it drip just a little. All right, you do one at a time. <laughs> You're gonna see it spitting. But that's all right, you're just getting all the water out of there. Now we're going to use this RV Marine antifreeze at the last step. After we dump our tanks and we close all of the valves, then we put it into our holding tank. I don't use the freshwater tank, so I'm not putting it in the freshwater tank. But in the free tank and in the black tank, I put the antifreeze in. It's this. Kevin Durant is not happy with the Nets. He's not happy with any team he goes on. I think Kyrie Irving is the same way too. They're not happy on any team they're on. Look at your bathroom, the two faucets. You're gonna have your hot and your cold, and you're gonna repeat the process in your shower, and, you're gonna, and then you're gonna start all over again just to get the residue water out. Next is your RV tub. Do not forget the shower because there's water all in those lines. Remember, it's pressurized, so you want to get as much water as you can out. You can take it off the air so it can lean a little bit. Pull that up. You may have to hold it, but you're going to see water coming out of there in a second. Look there, I got it all out. But let me shake this up a bit. Hold got on. All the water out of there, but you still want to check. Remember, we're going to go through this whole cycle two times. So you'll be surprised that how much water comes out the second time you go through this. Because remember, you're blowing the water around the whole RV system lines to get it out of the system. There's still going to be some residual water in there. So you go a second time to blow it out. What you want to see and what you want to hear once all the water is blown out. All you want to hear is air just missed that bit but it's still water coming out you see got to keep going back and forth do it two times at least two times to get all the water out of the line your RV toilet your RV toilet also has water in the lines coming back to the sink again do it all this while the kids are still in school that's funny. You blow out all the lines, we're gonna open back up the low point drains and we're gonna leave those open until we come camping again. And any residual water would just drip out. It should be almost nothing. By the time we leave, temperature is above freezing, so nothing's gonna freeze down there. But we just leave it open until the next time we come camping, which is gonna be like in a week. That was it, that little spit, and that was it. We do the same thing on the other side of here. Gotta do a little stretch to get this one. And that one has nothing. And we just leave those open until we camp the only again. The thing I have left to do is dump my tanks. The front gray tank is already empty because that valve is open. So I just have to close down the slide and then do my back gray tank and the black tank. Then I can start throwing antifreeze into the holding tanks and the P-traps. A lot of times when I'm doing the flush right before we leave, I'll let that flush go for a while just to clear out a lot of the leftover residue that's in the tank. I'll still fill it up and then dump again like four times before we leave. We have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna take my time and just let it flush out. This because it prevents any smells from going through. We had this camper for a little over a year and many times there's seven of us in here using that back bathroom and we never had any smells coming out. I mean, we clean the bathroom regularly, but we never have any smells coming from the black tank. And I believe that's because of the diligent flushing that we do, just rinsing out that tank every time we have to dump. All right. 
There you go, pouring some of this down into your back holding tank. Remember, we closed the drain already, so we can pour away down here. Into your tub, pour it in as easy as you can. You get a nice, healthy amount down there. Because remember, we're going to be storing this for a week or two, and it's supposed to be going down into like the teens and not come back up. So you want to make sure that you have enough antifreeze in your holding tanks just so that nothing will freeze. I like to pour slow just so that some can stay into the peat trap. That's us. Remember what I told you about leaving your valves open for your low point drains. As we drove off, we had some water in our fresh water tank that's coming out. I'll show you right now. Remember, leave those tanks open so that can drain out. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this week. See you next time. Bye. And remember, like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. You want to show the channel any thanks? That's what the thanks button is down below. See you guys next week. Bye, Bye everybody.